Hi, my name is Alex, and in this episode of Magic Missile Minis, I'm going to try sculpting with Milliput for the very first time. So, here I have my package of Milliput, and as you can see, this is the terracotta version, as opposed to the standard yellow-gray. I don't know that the properties of this version is any different from the standard version, but this was just cheaper. As you can see here, I've got both parts of the epoxy putty, and the top one seems to be the stickier, wetter part, whereas the gray part seems to be a lot stiffer, which you can see just as I'm pulling it off of the main stick. As I start to mix the two together, I can already tell how it's going to be very different from working with green stuff. It feels a lot more crumbly and reminds me a lot of working with air dry clays. What I've seen a lot of people do when working with Milliput or Epoxy Sculpt is actually mix it with some green stuff. So that's what I decided to do here, mixing some green stuff into the Milliput that I had mixed together to make the Milliput a little bit easier to work with. Here I have an armature that I had made beforehand, and I'm planning on sculpting a Minotaur, as suggested by Craig Dolliver. So to start out with, I build up the miniature a little bit. And I use this as a kind of a way to get used to using the Milliput a little bit, and specifically what it feels like to use some of my sculpting tools with it. And as I mentioned earlier, it's very crumbly to work with, so I later on I start using water so that it kind of stays together a little bit better, and that's a pretty good fix for the kind of crumbly nature of the Milliput. The first thing that I wanted to try with the Milliput was seeing how well it would do for sculpting anatomy. The way that I normally go about doing this is kind of making a base as I've done here and then adding on little bits of green stuff when I'm using green stuff obviously. But with the Milliput it's because it's not quite as sticky this doesn't quite work as well. It tends to slide around a little bit more than the green stuff does which can make it difficult to work with. Although you still can do this as you can see that I've been doing here. The main problem starts to come when you start adding too much water, because you want it to be wet so it's not super crumbly, but as I mentioned earlier, it can tend to slip around a lot. Which you can kind of see here, when I'm using this larger rubber sculpting tool, it just kind of dances around until it kind of settles, which makes it a little bit harder to use than green stuff. And sometimes, even when it does kind of sit in a place for a little while, if you push it around too much, it will fall off as you can see happening right here. It decided to stick to my tool rather than sticking to the miniature. So I don't think I'm going to be using the Milliput for anatomy anytime soon, which doesn't really surprise me, but I still wanted to try it just to get a feel for what using Milliput was like. For the legs of the Minotaur and the fur, I decided to just use green stuff because having worked with the Milliput on the anatomy, I could tell that doing fur with the Milliput wouldn't make any sense. And I also add a little bit of fur around the shoulders. The next thing that I wanted to work on was a weapon, and so I start by taking a toothpick that I'm going to use for the shaft of the spear, and filing that down so it is the right size. What I'm planning on making is a large axe. So I roll the milliput into a ball and flatten it out on a spare base. Once that's flattened out, I can take a craft knife and start cutting out the shape of the axe that I want to make. And once I have the main shape done, I take one of my rubber sculpting tools and start sculpting in the taper of the blade of the axe. As I was sculpting in the blade of the axe, I realized why a lot of people use milliput for sculpting out blades and weapons. The milliput does a fantastic job of holding the shape that you sculpt it into, and keeping the edges that you sculpt a lot sharper than green stuff does. You can see here, now that I've kind of done a little bit more work on the blade, just how defined the separation between the flat part of the axe and the taper of the blade is. I feel like it would have taken a lot longer to achieve this if I was using green stuff. I then chop off the bottom part of the axe that I was working on. Once that's set, I can actually flatten this out with a file, and this will help define the edges of this axe head even more than they already are. I also use an X-Acto blade to 
shave down the actual blades of the axe as opposed to using a file so that I have a little bit more control over the curvature of the blade. I then remove it from the base and clean up the edges a little bit with a file. One thing I noticed, however, was that both sides of my axe were not the same and this really bugged me, so I went ahead and chopped off the side that I didn't like quite as much. So the axe ended up being a single bladed axe instead of a double bladed axe. I then take my craft knife and carve in a little divot for where I'm going to be putting the shaft of the axe that I had made earlier. Retrospectively, it would have been better to add the shaft of the spear to the axe while the milliput was still wet. But for now, I put it in the little divot I created in the axe head and add more milliput over top of that that I then will sculpt into the other side of the axe head. Repeating the process that I did before, shaving it after the milliput has set to make all of the surfaces of the axe head nice and flat. With the axe head finished, I go in and I add a little bit more milliput to create a little design on the axe, just to make it look a little bit more interesting. And sculpting these small details with the milliput worked quite well, however I think I will need to come up with some better designs for weapons next time. But this axe served its purpose and I know that if I need to, I can just use milliput for the entire weapon. Another thing that I wanted to work on with the milliput is doing some armor. So I decided that I would give this Minotaur two large pauldrons. And so I put two large pieces of milliput into a kind of round shape that I can then turn into a pauldron. Kind of basing them loosely off of like the uh, Space Marine pauldrons since I've been doing a lot of Warhammer stuff recently. And then once I get the loose shape down, I let them set and go at them with a file filing them down into a nice round shape so that later on I can be adding some more milliput to them to kind of make a little ridge around the edge of the pauldron, which you can see me adding on right here. When I'm sculpting these parts, I am trying to do my best to use the same techniques that I explained in my video on how to sculpt armor using green stuff, pushing and pulling the material to try to create sharp edges. At some point when I'm a little bit more familiar with Milliput, I might actually redo that video on how to sculpt armor. When shaping the ridge of the pauldron, on one of them I wanted him to have kind of a guard that goes up a little bit from the pauldron. And you can see me sculpting that in here. But once that's finished, I can move on to do the rest of the ridge around this pauldron as well as the other pauldron on the other shoulder. While the pauldrons were setting, I added some belts out of green stuff and a little belt buckle out of the milliput. But once the milliput on the pauldrons have set, I take my craft knife and I start scraping away at them the same way I did with the weapon, focusing on getting all of the areas as flat as possible and the edges as sharp as possible. And you can start to see here just how effective this is for creating super super sharp edges. With both of the pauldrons finished, I take the wires on the hands and I curl them up so that they can hold the weapon that we had made earlier on. Clamping down the wires onto the shaft of the axe that we had made to keep it in place. And then I go in with a little bit of green stuff to sculpt the hands for the minotaur. Then to finish up the miniature, I make the head of the minotaur just out of green stuff like I normally would but I wanted to make the horns out of the milliput because I felt like it would be really good for the sharpness of the horns. So I went about doing this the same way I had done for the weapons and armor, adding on a little bit of the milliput and then shaving it off into a point. But what I didn't realize was while I was attaching the head to the rest of the body, one of the horns actually broke because there's the sharpest point of the horn didn't have a wire going through it, which you'll be able to see more clearly in the final shot of the miniature. And it's something I didn't think of happening was because the milliput is a lot harder than green stuff that it's actually more brittle and could break. Speaking of the final shot of the mini, here is a little turnaround of the finished miniature. And you can see on the left horn that the horn is broken off at the end because of how brittle the material is. Although I'm not going to be painting the miniature, I wanted to show you the miniature with a layer of black primer on it. 
because I feel like that really shows off just how sharp some of these edges are when sculpting with Milliput. Thank you so much for watching that video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit the bell to get notified whenever I release a video. Also, don't forget to check out the Patreon if you're interested in supporting the channel. If you have a suggestion for a video or something that you might want me to sculpt, or questions for how to sculpt something that you're working on yourself, leave it down in the comments below. But anyways, once again, thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.